And so then as you're thinking about doing the exam, as you walk into the exam, it feels pointless because I cried my heart out on the doorstep and it made no difference. everyone and welcome to live support with Odeal for changing negative implicit childhood memories using the Remit method. We've created this forum for those who watched our YouTube videos or read our book and need personal help using the techniques to get changes but aren't in a position yet to do one-to-one -one sessions. If you're new to the Remit method, be sure to check out the links in the description of this post. And if you'd like to submit a question or you'd like me to take you through the process of changing memories in this forum, check the link in the description of this video for details on that. Today in the room, we have Swasti. So over to Swasti. Hey. <laughs> hey, Swasti. How are you doing? I'm okay. So I just need help with the exam situation. So consciously, I'm okay with it now because like the medical squad, like a few meetings and they were like, oh, this is normal. At some point, this is going to happen kind of thing. Like not to me specifically, but to everyone. And then it's like, oh, it's just a challenge in the journey and da da da. So they were just nice about it and they were supportive. Who, who was that? Like Did the you... medical school team. Like oh, the, the team. Okay. academic team. Ah, yeah. yes. But for me, emotionally, I have no faith. Like I'm struggling to feel that is possible. <laughs> So a lot, a lot of it's me going like, why me? Or why, okay. why did I end up in this situation? And then yeah. like last year, I felt like, oh yeah, I'll make it through. Like I had some belief in myself. This year I'm like, I actually don't know. Okay. All right. Very good. So first of all, when you think, why me? What do you think is the answer to that? I actually don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, I just think it could be anyone. Like uh -huh. it says nothing about the person. Right. Yeah. But I wasn't sure if there was any reasoning there for you that you're coming up with. Well, yeah. I just think like, oh, you're so dumb because I know my stuff. Yeah. But then as soon as I sit in an exam, I just choose the wrong things or something stupid goes on. Mm -hmm. Like the knowledge doesn't show up in writing kind of thing. Right. Okay. And have you done any exams since you changed those references for that? In other words, since you changed the references for I have to struggle and the other things that we did. No, like as in, so the two exams I did were like two, three weeks ago. So you had references then about that everything has to be a struggle, yeah. right? And that if you were to succeed, it wouldn't fit in with those references, those childhood references of your grandmother, you know, having to impress mm. people and all of that. That was back then. And since then, so the next time you do an exam, it's going to be with different references. Mm -hmm. Does that make yes. sense? I think this is where I just, this is where I have no faith that okay. <laughs> this is where All I'm right. my own ability right. to believe. Okay, very good. So let's ask the question, how do you know that won't happen? How do you know that it's going to continue to be bad? Okay, so I was only a few marks off the pass mark. And like I said, I made like around 20 stupid mistakes. So right. if those stupid mistakes hadn't happened, I would be technically 12 marks above the pass mark, which right. is quite good. But yeah. I don't know that it won't happen again. Okay, good. So let's look at that a little deeper. When you go into the exam, so in two weeks time, you can reset the exam. You're going to go into the room. What do you think will happen when you go in this time? So it's a shorter paper, so it's 90 marks, okay. not 120. There's less marks available to succeed in. Mm -hmm. okay. Like, you know, because the percentage is lower. So I'm like, oh, I've got to get more right. And then what if like topics come up that I literally can't remember? Or like I pick something wrong again? Or it's okay. actually not easy, as I said. Out of the 90 marks, how many do you have to get right in order to pass? We don't know. Like the pass mark is set, but they don't tell you until after. Oh, interesting. Okay. All right. So, but it's a percentage. Don't know. Oh, okay. You don't know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because I was going to say a percentage yeah. of, if it's a percentage of 120 or a percentage of 90, it's mm. not necessarily going to be more of the 90. It'll be fewer of the 90 that you have to get. Yeah. No. So the pass mark is set according to them, passing okay. bodies and all of the people do the work and they'll oh. lower it if everyone did badly. Like that's how mm -hmm. this works. But they don't tell us what it is before. 
Okay. And is anyone else having to reset this exam? Yeah, it's most of the year group. <laughs> most of them. Yeah. So that's something, right? Yeah. Most of the year group have to reset this exam and you are one of them. Yeah. Right. Isn't that interesting that you are seeing that as a negative thing or like there's something wrong with you or you're bad in some way mm. when that's not the case? Presumably, yeah. they really want most people to pass because otherwise they won't have many students left. Whatever it is, they're going to do whatever it takes to help most of the students pass. And if you're one of those most of the students. Yeah. Right. What we want to do is answer the logic of it first. So to get your mm -hmm. conscious mind, answer those, you know, those concerns and everything. I didn't realize it was most of them. That's fantastic news. Yeah. So yeah. you are at least as good as most of them, right? Yeah. <laughs> Who are you comparing yourself to, if not most of the class? I just well, I have the fear of it won't be me. Like I won't pass through. Good you know, I'll be job, the one left Swasti. behind. Very good, sweetheart. And that's going to be childhood reference, but let's let's come to that in a moment. First of all, again, the logic of it. How do you know that you are going to be, if anyone's going to be left behind, it's going to be you. How do you know that? From like a learning perspective, I'm always like the slower of people. Like someone can read something once and know it or like understand okay. it at least. It takes me around five repetitions of the same thing. Okay. So let's say in any particular group, are you always the slowest? Are you the second slowest? Whereabouts are you compared to that group? Around the second slowest. There's always someone slower. Yeah. Okay, so you're the second slowest. Okay, yeah. is that really the case or is that your perception? In other words, how do you know that everyone else, except for that one lower than you, but how do you know everyone else is faster than you? Well, like in group work, everyone's like understanding a concept, mm -hmm. like much quicker. And then okay. they can explain it. And I'm like, oh yeah. But then it takes me like a few more minutes or like reading the same thing again and again to be like, okay, now I understand it. So that's okay. what I mean. And okay. that is fact. Okay. So a couple of things here. First of all, weren't you diagnosed with dyslexia? Yeah. <laughs> That'll be yeah. a contributing factor at the very least, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's understandable. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you have certain parameters to work within that, right? You have certain coping skills and mechanisms around that, that they're yeah. supporting you with. Yes, like the extra time, okay. yeah. Fantastic. So that's good. So make sure that you are reminding yourself of that when you reassure yourself. Yes, it takes me a little longer because the dyslexia and that's why I've got extra time. Mm. Okay, so rather than seeing it as something's wrong with you or you're not doing something right or something beyond your control, but allowances are made for it to balance that, right? Yeah. Okay. And then the second thing to bear in mind about that is that the calmer you are, the, the better you're feeling, the happier you're feeling, the more mm -hmm. you'll have your prefrontal cortex online, which will, of course, help you comprehend, understand, and process information much quicker, much easier. Okay. So that's something to bear in mind as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I want you to imagine that you've got a little girl with you and she's like eight years old or so, eight to 10 years old. She is reading and everybody else has finished reading and they can explain it and all that quite easily. And it's taking her a little bit longer to comprehend it and to be able to explain it. What would you say to her? It's okay. Like it doesn't really matter. Yeah, no, I get that. But my thing is, so during like, for example, now revision time, mm -hmm. everyone has the same amount of time. So I would be able to get through less because I need to repeat the same thing more. Right. And that feels like an unfair thing. That's what feels unfair to me. It's like, oh, okay. they've revised something twice and know it. Whereas I've had to go through the same thing 10 times. So I'm not right. surprised at times where I'm like, I don't remember this at all because okay. I haven't reviewed it enough. But there is too much content to just focus on one thing because that's not yeah. a good tactic that I use, like that I've learned. Yes, yes. Okay. And have you mentioned that to the study team, to the support team? Yeah, they're like, oh, you can only try your best, which is true. <laughs> And they don't seem worried about that. No, because other people have dyslexia too. It's not just me. Right. Okay. Like a lot of people, like I was surprised by how many people there were, like with the same Great. conditions. Yeah. So that's good to know. Okay. Mm. So you're not alone. You're not the only one starting or with that bit of a disadvantage as far as studying time goes. How long do you think you would really need in order to fully revise ready for that exam? Probably like two months. Two months? Yeah. Mm. All right. 
Okay, so if you were to condense it right down to two weeks, do you have an idea of what to prioritize? Yeah, like I have no issue in getting through stuff. I don't feel overwhelmed by it. But the only issue okay. is I cover breadth, so I forget stuff. Like because I don't review the same thing like five times. I review mm -hmm. it like two or three times and then move on. Okay. But now having said that, in the original exam, you knew the right answers. Yeah. Right? You just didn't pick them, but you knew it. Yeah. So you yeah. do know the information, even though you don't think you know it. Well, yes, but also in these two weeks of a break, I forgot a lot of information because it was short term. That's something I'm going over now. Now, here's another thing to consider, again, just on the logic of it. So you're learning all this information in order to pass the exams, but presumably you're also learning all this information because you need this information as a doctor. Yeah. And you're not going to be able to revise all of it every time when you're a doctor. No. So you're learning this information and it's going to be in there because you're going to need it in not just two weeks time, you're going to need it in several years time. Yeah. So it can't be that two weeks break makes you forget everything or most of it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah. it has to be in there because there are doctors who of course yeah. using that information. So remind yourself yeah. of that as well, because what's happening is the fear is coming from something in your childhood, the doubt, the fear, the uncertainty, and then your conscious mind is giving reason to it like, well, I'll forget everything and two weeks break. And, you know, so it's coming up with those reasons, but they're not real reasons. Mm -hmm. They're just what happens to be in front of you at the time. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, good, yeah. good, 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 good job. All right. So now let's look at your childhood. So, so let's just look, so you, you, are worried that when you get to, when you when go into the exam, you're going to have forgotten everything. Is that right? Yeah, but also like picking the wrong answer again as well. Picking the wrong yeah. answer again. Okay. And so when you get into the exam this time and you realize you know the right answer, the first answer that comes to you and you think, yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. And then you look at the others and you're tempted to pick something else. What are you going to do? Well, yeah, not pick it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. You're going to remind yourself, right? And mm -hmm. go, oh, yeah, hold on a second. I do know this. The more calm you can be, the more you'll be able to use that logic mm -hmm. rather than I've got to pick, I, oh, but what if it's this? What if it's that? So let's now mm -hmm. look at the doubt because I think the doubt is, is a feature here that's underlying things. So, yeah. yeah. When you think of your childhood, and you think of putting your trust in something or expecting something or believing something and then having that trust broken, mm -hmm. anything come to mind? I have a visual of tantrum, like huh? extreme, like I, I just cried. I don't know what it was, but I just threw a tantrum at some point. Okay. But I don't and know about what, I just, it was just intense. And what's the feeling of the tantrum? What emotion is there, do you think? But recently it's just been like gut-wrenching sadness you know when wow. a child is like so sad yes can identify with that feeling from my childhood okay so that wrenching sadness so let's do this imagine the little you in front of you and she's throwing a tantrum or she's got that wrenching sadness can you imagine that good and what mm -hmm. does she need what do you think she needs a hug very good can you give her a hug yeah very good and now can you have her parents give her a hug, your mum and your dad. No. Good. They okay. cause issues. <laughs> I don't All right. Hug me. Oh, okay. I was going to say, what happens when you try? Okay. So they cause the issues and you don't want them to hug you. Now, what if they could undo whatever was done? How would that feel? Yeah, but I don't trust that they will. Like, okay. Yeah. Okay, so how about this? They say they'll put everything right. They'll undo whatever it is and they'll make it all right and this will never happen again and that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. you say to them, well, I'll believe that when I see it. Okay. Right? I'm not going to believe you. I'm going to wait until mm -hmm. I see. And mm -hmm. then they do. They prove it to you. Okay. How would that feel? Okay, it's just a feeling. It's no visual. Yeah, oh. that's yeah. okay. Yeah. That's okay. As long as the feeling is there, that's okay. And how does it feel? What's the feeling there? It's slight relief, but it's not like a full exhale relief. <laughs> okay, good. And what do you think it would take for that full exhale relief? I don't know. 
Okay. So I want you to imagine that you have that little you as a fairy godmother. Mm -hmm. Okay. This wonderful fairy godmother. And she's always with you. Okay. And she's always protecting you and making sure you're okay. And she gives that little you something like, and it can be a piece of jewelry. It can be accessory. It can be a toy, anything at all, piece of clothing. She gives that to you. And that is your protection and safety. It's infused with magic and it always keeps you safe no matter what. Now, if that was possible, if that little you could have something like that, how would that feel? Great. Like an invisible cloak. That's yeah. right. I feel yes. good. Mm. Good. All right. So I want you to imagine that that's actually what happened. Okay. It doesn't matter what anyone else is doing. It doesn't even matter what you do. You've always got this invisible cloak. With, yeah. How would that feel? Great. Good. Now, yeah. if that was really real, how would you feel going into the exam? I feel okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know okay. why I'm struck. Yeah, I don't know why I'm struggling to feel the full the power of it. Um, that's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It may be because it feels unsafe. And that's what we want to really mm. dig down to find. If you were to put all your trust into either yourself mm. or the fact that everything always turns out okay or anything at all, if you were to put all your trust in anything, what would be wrong with that? I always thought that if I was not doing something, I was out of control. I don't think that's true because I'm okay. sitting this exam, it's in my control, uh -huh. right? But I still don't trust the yeah. full process kind of thing. That's um, right. So I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I think we need to go back to your parents leaving you in India. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back to that because yeah. that's where the original feelings of not having control, things just happening no matter what you do, mm -hmm. right? So let's go to that and anything stand out from that time? I know we've changed memories there. So anything stand out for now? No. Okay. Not right now. So, all right. So let's do this. Pick a scene that can represent that time when you were left in India with your grandmother and your parents left India. So pick a scene that can represent that. You got it? Yeah. And now next to that scene, put the exam room or however the, res the exam is represented for you. Mm -hmm. And I want you to say, hey, you've got those two scenes in front of you. Mm -hmm. And I want you to play spot the difference or spot the similarity. And okay. notice, is there anything similar in these scenes? Anything that these scenes share? It doesn't have to be visual. It can be anything. It can be a knowing, can be a feeling, anything at all. It can be a sound. Yeah. It's just a hatred, hatred for entering that room. Oh, I hate, good. hate it so much. So you yeah. hate entering the room. What's the equivalent in the scene with your parents leaving? Okay. So the crying, which I said before, like the tantrum, yeah. I was throwing that tantrum when they were leaving. Mm, there you yeah. go. At the doorstep. Oh, oh mm. you see. And that tantrum was not a tantrum. That was pure fear. Yeah. Mm. That was like, I'm going to die. Right. So if a child was crying like that because they were about to be attacked by a wild animal, would you judge them? No. <laughs> <laughs> and that's effectively the same thing that was happening as far as the unconscious part of the brain was concerned. Because mm -hmm. it wasn't like you were going to be having a wonderful time. It wasn't like you were going to Disney World and your parents are going off to, to the UK. No. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. it was they were leaving and you weren't comfortable or safe where you were. Or feeling mm -hmm. safe where you were. Okay, that's great. That's great to find that. All right, let's do a stepping stone there. So what should have happened when you cried like that on the doorstep when your parents were leaving? Well, they should have turned back and reassurance. Um, yeah. Like everyone should have been reassuring. Right. And, like somebody should have told them that it's wrong because Absolutely. they do things which they think is right, but it's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine that that's actually what happened? as a first stepping stone. Yeah, because I've been creating these memories of like master classes <clears throat> of parenting. So right. being taught Good. how to parent. So that helps, yeah. Um, Somebody tells them that is wrong. Great idea. Very good. All right. So that's one stepping stone. And then let's look now at the little you crying. What does she want them to do? Hug me and stay with me. That's right. Yes. So mm -hmm. hug you and go, you know what? We're not going to go. We're not going to leave you here. Of course, we're not going to leave you here. So what that does is it gives that little you control that yeah. she didn't have. So that her crying, 
Good, good, good. That's it. So now she she's cried and it's made a difference. Yeah, the expression had made a difference. That's yeah, because I was like, I would cry to a brick wall because nothing would happen. Exactly. Yeah. And that is, you know, that happens a lot where children are not heard. And mm. not being heard is not just about, oh, not being heard and that's unfortunate or it's annoying or whatever. That can feel life-threatening. Mm. Not feeling heard on a consistent basis or not feeling understood is a lot more intense and serious than most people realize and can mm. do a lot more damage than people realize. All right. Very good. So establish those memories. So the memory first where they turn around, they're taught it's wrong, they come back, all of that. And then the memory where you have that, you're crying and it has the effect that you want. It gets the result you want. Okay. So practice that over and over and really allow yourself to feel the feeling of that control, that relief, that whatever's mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and really home in on that feeling, amp up that feeling and focus on it. All right. And then once that's established, now let's look at the scene now with your parents doing that. So it's, you've got the control and the exam room and any difference there as you compare those two scenes. Now the exam room is filled with light and it's nice and it's there to support me through. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Good job, Swasti. Yeah. So I feel that now... sigh. Yeah. Oh, sigh of relief. <laughs> Oh, that is wonderful. I'm so glad. And now, of course, it's very, very important. In fact, it's crucial to keep repeating that so that you establish it in your brain. Because as we know, I'm saying this mostly for other, I know you know this, but I want to mm -hmm. say for others as well, that it takes repetition to really establish that. So that when you think of doing the exam, you see that light, you feel that sigh of relief, and you feel that same feeling that you've got in your childhood in that new memory. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel now about doing that exam? Yes, I feel good. I feel good. like people are with me rather than against me. That's yeah. it. Exactly. And so, you know, recognizing that it's not about the exam. It's not about the organizers or the whoever they are. You know, it's not about the other kids. Mm -hmm. It's not about being slower or any of that. It's about crying your heart out because you feel like you're going to die and it making no difference. Yeah. So you are yeah. studying your heart out as much, preparing as much as you can, and it's not making any difference in the exam. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah. So your brain is keeping you in alignment with that. And so then as you're thinking about doing the exam, as you walk into the exam, it feels pointless because I cried my heart out on the doorstep and it made no difference. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I you got that? that? Now. Yeah. <laughs> Good, good, good. All right. So how do you feel now moving forward? I feel good. Yeah, because I was even struggling to like use a superpower. So I had to allow a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then change what was coming up because right now, like I'm at home. So the uh -huh. triggers are, well, not at home. because Well, yeah, something's going on at home. But like the triggers were there all day long. And I was right. like, so I was just addressing like the triggers as they came. But I was yeah. like not finding anything big. Yeah. Right. Well done, you. So you feel confident moving forward now with this? I do, yeah. So if I have any questions, I will be sure to ask. <laughs> Please do, yes. Good job, sweetheart. I'm so, so proud of you, really. You. And I'm excited for you. And thank you for bringing this here because I know it will help others as well. Good job, you. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right, everyone. That's all for this week. I don't have anyone else on the list. So I will see you all again, same time, same place next week. Lots of love to all of you. Bye-bye.